And, uh, and I thought they were kind of the end of the line, in a way. Like, um, oh, Bill Evans was in Ma's band also. Um, who's a bass player? I can't remember another guy. But anyway, probably it's like tons of people. What I came to find was that they kind of, it went further than them. Like, Frank Zappa, big influence on Frank Zappa was uh, Messeon and Edgar Varez. And that's where you start to get at that far out 20th century uh, com composers. And uh, Stockhausen may be among the weirdest. Uh, I, I, I love Stockhausen for his lectures. I learned so much from his lectures. Um, music I don't listen to so much. Uh, but I, from time to time, it's interesting. It helps you kind of... It's fresh, that's for sure. He, he had this one where he wrote a... He, he wrote like a string piece, I think for four, four, I don't know what it was, four violins or something, but you know, four stringed instruments and a helicopter. Or maybe, I don't know, it was more than one. Or I think, I don't know, maybe each, each guy was in his own helicopter. I don't remember, but so they were, they were in helicopters performing the music and you hear the sound of the helicopter and everything. And, and he did things like he had, my favorite piece from him is called Mantra. And it's sequential form, extreme sequential, sequential to the extreme, like Bach used sequences in his music. This is like sequential music. He has a mantra, which is like a melody. I don't know if it's 12 notes or 11 or however many notes it is. And each note in the melody has some characteristic. Uh, it could be uh, a dotted note or it could be legato, into it or out of it, I don't know. But it's like every every note isn't just a note; it has some quality. And then um, that melody is played uh, throughout the piece over and over and over again. Supposedly, the, that's all there is to the piece is that melody. It's the mantra that repeats over and over again. But every time it repeats, it repeats in some kind of sequence, and the sequence is taken far. Like it's it's like rhythmically changed by the sequence like you take one of the qualities that i mentioned before of the notes in that melody if each one has its own kind of little quality and you take the quality and you play the mantra with that quality the whole mantra with the quality of the first note or the second one or the third one and and then he did and then it's written for two pianos and the pianos are um you know they're facing each other and they runs them through a ring modulator and the ring modulator is manipulated manually by another person like it were an instrument and his his controlling the ring modulator is um um it's written how he's supposed to control it it's like with a score and the score is written you know not in music notation it's written in some other form that I for all I know, Stockhausen came up with. Maybe Messeon did it, I don't know. Messeon was like a teacher of Stockhausen. Um, and uh, most of it, and it's pretty amazing. And then he's got these like little like bells, little things, whatever. And they, they hit them to signify the end of one cycle through and then the beginning of another between the mantra that repeats over and over again with the qualities of, of the original melody and stuff. And it's pretty much unrecognizable, uh, and the melody's singable, the initial melody. After that, nothing singable. It's, to me, it's his most grounded piece, probably, as ironic as that sounds. A lot of it, it's what 99.9% .9 of people would describe as noise, his music. Uh... I could talk forever about him. He's done so many interesting things. But from his lectures, which you can u watch on YouTube, a lot there's a lot of hours, a lot of hours. And uh, I watched him many times, and I took notes, and I applied that to my music. But with my music, I, I, I listened to everything he said, and I filtered it with some of my uh, philosophical views so that I could retain what I thought was substance and what wasn't. And, um, and I integrated everything I learned into my albums not in my first one because I hadn't heard of him at the time but uh, to me some of the more interesting things that I've done 
having to do with the, 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 the CD. That's where I got a lot more into recording because I was, try, I was trying to do things that were not done before. And the easiest way to do that is things that are not necessarily performable because people have been performing for so long. And in the guitar realm, everything's tapped out, you know, sort of like it's tapped out with the violin realm. And Stockhausen was on the fringe of things that have never been done before, like so extreme. Um, but I wanted to do it in a more, um, in ways that, that were more objective. Um, like he had a thing called intuitive music. And uh, he basically, he wasn't grounded philosophically. He would take any philosophy that would give him an idea. And uh, so he, he'd have, that he would use that, those philosophies as a basis. The only, the only philosophy he never used really was an objective one. Um, so, I don't know, it's, there's a reason his music is almost unlistenable, but, um, but I respect him a lot as a guy, and, I mean, I would have had him sign a guitar, you better believe it. Uh, I learned so much from him. One of the, one of the top five people I learned from, probably, in my life, as far as musically. Number one, obviously, being Alex Makachek. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, there's just so much, like, what is Dr. John doing? I see the book over here. What does he do? What does Virgil and I do? Aerosmith, what does he do? Joe Pass, and what makes the difference? And Bach, you know, like, uh, Tom Waits, Randy Newman. Randy Newman and Dr. John are not so far off. And in, 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 in musical style, but in terms of, like, lyrical content, Randy Newman is farther off than any of the others. He's really, what is he doing lyrically? What's... Makes the stuff so interesting. Like, those are the questions you ask. Or Paul Gilbert, for example. What they like? What makes them all individual and special and interesting? Those are the compositional questions. When you answer that, and you start to find their tricks, they're not really tricks, but you can use them like tools. I mean, they do. It's their methods, and uh, exactly, it reflects their personalities. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Having fun is the essence, I'd say, of Paul Gilbert. He's, uh, he's having a good time, loving what he's doing, and practicing. <laughs> getting better. Always getting better. He's, he's one of those guys that's always getting better. Virgil and Ollie's always getting better, too. But he definitely has a lot less... Um, ver there's not very much fun projected. Um, it's very serious. Um, Sometimes he'll kind of, I think, kind of try to show that he's having a good time. And he may be having a good time, but it's seriously a good time. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm being serious, though, at the same time. Like, but it's not fake. He's just naturally kind of a more, he's totally introverted, very serious. Um, you know, I'm not saying he doesn't laugh and smile and have a good time. It's just very different than Paul Gilbert. <laughs> 